Today on Passion for Food, I'll show you a couple of easy tricks to making the perfect pot of chili. There are a couple of things that sets the perfect chili apart from an okay chili, and I will share what those are. So let's go ahead and get started. And just like a good house needs a strong foundation, so does a good dish need a good aromatic foundation. So we're going to start off here with one large carrot three stalks of celery and about one large onion. Oh, I lied. This is actually two medium sized onions. Close enough. And finally, about five or six cloves of garlic, depending on how much you love garlic. I really love it a lot. This particular mix minus the garlic is often called a mirepoix. And I use this as the aromatic foundation for quite a few different dishes I like to make. But just like with our meatloaf recipe, I'll put a little link to that in the top right here. We want these to add flavor, but we don't want to really notice them in the final dish. So we're going to actually process these until they're quite fine. I mean, if we tell people there's carrots and celery in there, we might get a few chilly looks. But trust me, it's worth it. So just keep processing these until they're nice and small. I really like a Dutch oven for this. The thickness of the metal really helps to keep the heat nice and even. So in we go with about two pounds of 80-20 ground chuck. I do like the fattiness of that cut for this. You notice I'm not adding any additional oil. We are going to render out and use all of that beef fat for our chili. So we're going to liberally grind on some fresh cracked pepper. Now I like to use the uh, tri-color pepper blend, but whatever sort of pepper you have will be just fine for this. So once we're happy with our chilies pepper situation, we're going to also go in with about a tablespoon of salt. So at this point, we're going to cut our heat onto high and we're also going to add our garlic mirepoix mixture that we prepared earlier. And we just want to get all of this nicely cooked down together. That fat that's rendering out of our beef will help saute those vegetables beautifully. And while that continues to cook, let's prepare some fresh chili powder. I'm going to be using a combination of guajillo peppers, which is what you see me with here, and some arbol chilies. The guajillos have a great flavor and the arbol chilies bring more spiciness. So I like the combination for a good chili balance. I went with one guajillo and three arbol chilies here, but you can adjust that depending on the level of spice you want. More arbol chilies would mean spicier chili. Now, we could totally be using prepackaged chili powder for this, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Every time I taste that stuff, it really tastes like it was ground six years ago in a galaxy far, far away. So, I, you know, it really is worth grinding your own chili powder. And these little coffee grinders, you know, they're less than $10. You can get one for cheap, and we all like a good grind from time to time. I mean, just look at the beautiful color we get on this final chili powder. You just can't get this in a pre-ground mix, in my opinion. So let's check back in with our Dutch oven, and as we can see, this is all cooking together beautifully for us. So let's go ahead and dump in our chili powder. If you're using the pre-packaged stuff, this is going to be about two tablespoons. So let's just give that a quick mix, and we're also going to add one four and a half ounce can of tomato paste. Now, I know there are so many variations of chili out there. You know, back in the day, I really thought I was kicking things up a notch by uh, adopting Alton Brown's chili recipe, where he has you using whole cuts of beef and pork, you know, and you simmer it together, and no beans. Of course, no beans ever in chili, right, according to Alton Brown. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, if you hand someone a bowl of that and tell them it's chili, they're going to look back at you with confusion in their eyes. They might love it, but it just doesn't really seem like chili, does it? So, ultimately, I went back to making mine in this classic form, but I think with a flavor profile that really does exceed expectations. And to help round out our chili's flavor, we're also going to add one diced green pepper. They do add a great flavor, but leaving them whole and adding them a little bit late like this also means they're still going to be visible in our final chili, which just classes things up a little bit. And speaking of classing things up, we also want to go in with about a pint of beer. Yes, something you would drink, please. And finally, I am going to add some pinto beans. This is half a cup of dried pintos that I let sit in boiling water for an hour. 
I know the debate rages between beans or no beans. You can certainly leave these out. Um, you know, as much as I hate to use the term mouthfeel, I really feel like the texture of chili can get a little monotonous without at least some beans in there. And finally, for our dark horse ingredient, just about a teaspoon of MSG. I like to sneak this into quite a few dishes. It's kind of like just cranking up the flavor knob on whatever dish you're putting it into. And we're just going to add enough water to cover. This is about a cup and a half. And we just want to give this a good mix. We want to make sure nothing is sticking to the bottom. Once we're happy, we'll cover this and simmer on low for about an hour or two. It's definitely ready after an hour, but I think it's slightly better after two. So after a nice long simmer, let's have a look here. The smell from those fresh ground chilies really is amazing, so we'll give this a quick stir. And then there is one final crucial step here. We want to give this a taste. This is our last chance to adjust for seasoning, and I like to get a bean in there to make sure they're cooked, especially if you were using dry pintos like I was. But this was perfect, so let's go ahead and grab a bowl. Really, nothing beats a hot, steaming bowl of chili on a cold day. Or any day, really. Now, this is perfect as it is, but why not kick it up to the next level with a nice dollop of sour cream and a nice sprinkling of spring onion? And yes, I'm totally going to put more sour cream into there. Hey, don't you judge me. Anyway, I think this is easily the perfect chili recipe, and I challenge you to give it a try and see if you just don't agree with me. I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Passion for Food. If you have, I don't want to get jalapeno face, but please do hit the like button and consider subscribing and hitting that little bell so you don't miss our future episodes. This has been Graham with Passion for Food.